Hello, welcome to the fourth part in our Joseph series from Community Church in Putney. You're really welcome today. Last week we looked at um, how the power was in the seed. And we talked about any fruit here, for example, a, an apple, that if we planted that seed, there will be fruit and it will grow into more apples and we'll be able to enjoy that fruit. And we talked about how Joseph is, is like Jesus and how Joseph was planted down into a kind of death in Egypt and how his brothers and family and many in Egypt were going to enjoy all that Joseph was going to do for them, though they deserve nothing. That's like us. Jesus has been planted into death and risen from, the, from death. And because he has died for us, the power of his resurrection, the power of the cross is at work in every Christian. And we're all enjoying our salvation. We're enjoying forgiveness. We're enjoying the power of the Holy Spirit. The power is in the seed. All that we are and all that we will do comes out of who Jesus is. He is working in us. And any success that we see is all to be attributed to and Jesus is to be praised for. The power is in the seed. And I said last week that there is a, but there is a response how we need to respond. Yes, we begin by believing in the power of Jesus, but that doesn't mean to say that we're to be passive. We are also to become like seeds who are to be planted and we are to bear fruit as well. Paul, in his uh, one of his letters, expresses this balance of relying on God completely whilst making effort. So he says in Philippians 2, 12 to 13, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling because it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his good purpose. Paul knew that anything he did was because of the power of the Holy Spirit working in him, through him. And that's true for us. Anything that we will do will be because of the power of God at work in us. So we, we, we go into the world taking action in faith because we believe in the power of God, not because we believe in our own strength and ability. Fear says I can't do anything. Pride says I can do it. Whereas true humility says through Jesus, I can. And that's the attitude we're to have. The power is in the seed, but that power works in us, through us, into the world. I like to go to Kew Gardens. I like to walk through parks. We've got Wimbledon Common nearby. We've got Richmond Park nearby. Wherever we walk, I guess maybe you've even got on your... Um, on your uh, window sill, a pot maybe, where you've got some plants growing. But if we plant nothing, we will see nothing. We reap what we sow. If we see any beautiful tree, beautiful flowers, this time of year in spring, oftentimes those things, we're enjoying what someone else or maybe we have sown. If we sow nothing, we reap nothing. We must sow in order to enjoy. Sow seeds. I have some seeds here. If I opened these, these fruit, if I sow seeds, I will enjoy the benefits, the fruit of those seeds. And the message of today could be entitled, the, to be fruitful, we must be planted. I have here a little pot. To be fruitful, we must also be planted. We talked about Jesus was planted in death, Joseph was planted in death, and they bore fruit. But now we follow the Christ, the Jesus-like pattern. We are to be planted, and then we will bear fruit. We will only bear fruit if we are 
planted. I'm going to explain what that means. To be fruitful, we must be planted. Joseph was planted by God. And that planting first meant being despised. To be planted means to be pushed into that soil, to be despised. In Genesis 37, 18, it says, When they saw him in the distance, his brothers, before he reached them, they plotted to kill him. 37, 23 says, So when Joseph came to his brothers, they stripped him of his robe, his the ornate robe he was wearing. So firstly, to be planted means to be, or be willing anyway, to be despised, like Jesus, like Joseph, like any Christian throughout history that's achieved much for God, they're prepared to suffer, prepared to be planted by being despised. But he wasn't only despised, the second part of planting was darkness. He was put into the cistern. We read in Genesis 37, 24, they took him, threw him into a cistern. The cistern was empty. There was no water. He was despised, but then he was put out. He was rejected. Thirdly, there's destination. To be planted involves destination. He was sent to Egypt. For Jesus, he was sent outside the city to the cross. Destination. Genesis 37, 28. His brothers pulled Joseph up out of the cistern, sold him for 20 shekels of silver to the Ishmaelites, who took him to Egypt. 37, 31. Then they got hold of Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, dipped the robe in the blood, they took the ornate robe back to their father and said, we found this, examine it to see whether it is your son's robe. Carries on in verse 33, Jacob recognised it and said, it is my son's robe. Some ferocious animal has devoured him. Joseph was planted by being despised, by put, being put into darkness and by being sent to a destination. That's what we get from this story. Like Jesus, he was despised. He was sent into darkness and he was sent to that destination of the cross. That's what it means. But to be planted, you know, we can be rejected. We can go through all these things, but it only becomes pl a planting that will bear fruit when, like Jesus and like Joseph, we receive what's happening to us in worship, in trust, in faith. Yes, of course, we can pray that God would take us out of darkness, take us out of Egypt, take us out of the dungeon, take us out of the situation that we're in. Of course, we can pray that. But whilst maybe he leaves us longer than we would want in that situation, it remains a planting all the while we trust God whilst we're in it. And we worship him and we serve him and serve others whilst we're in that situation in that soil that he's put us into to be to be fruitful like Joseph and Jesus and any saint throughout history we must be planted be prepared to be planted I read this to you last week and really as I've said this this message is really part two of last week and I'll read to you again Jesus's words from John 12, 24 to 26, which say, very truly, I tell you, very truly, I tell you. He's emphasising this. Unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it. Well, anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. To be fruitful, like Jesus as it explains here, Jesus was planted in death. 
And it says that he will bear many seeds. This is the great promise, isn't it? Throughout the whole world, lives are being transformed because Jesus was planted. But do you see that they, the, 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 the people that come that receive Jesus' life are called seeds? He will produce many seeds. You and I are seeds. And our identity is as those who are planted like Jesus. We loo- when we live for comfort, when we live for consumerism, when we live for selfishness, when we live just for ourselves, maybe our families, live for status symbols, look very different, the same as the world. When we, when we live for ourselves like that, live for this world, only we lose our identity because we're seeds we're meant to be those who are planted which means sacrificial service even though it means being despised sometimes like Joseph and going into darkness like Joseph maybe maybe that means a destination that we would rather not live in or a place we would rather not go to but we're serving Jesus he's our Lord and Saviour to be fruitful we must be planted Very truly, unless a kernel of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. If it dies, it produces many seeds. Jesus is producing many seeds. I'm a seed. If you're a Christian, you are a seed. The power of Jesus has made us into people who want to give our lives in love for others, following Jesus' pattern. The text we just looked at, it goes on to say anyone who loves their life will lose it. While anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Jesus puts it very starkly. To be planted means to hate our life. It means not to live for ourselves. Not to just want want our own will. My will be done. It's to live for Jesus. Embracing God's will. Your will be done. Not as I will, is what Jesus prayed, but as you will. Embracing the dark circumstances. Embracing embracing the cistern, whatever cistern we may be in, in Jesus' name. It goes on to say, whoever serves me must follow me. Where I am, my servant also will be. My father will honour the one who serves me. To be planted is to follow Jesus. It's to have a daily relationship with Jesus. It's to listen to Jesus' voice. This series is called Having Dreams. Big dreams for God. Joseph received a dream that he was going to go. He didn't understand this at the time, but he was going to go to Egypt. He's, he was going to, after a long and windy road, a dark path, he was going to become a ruler and actually save his people. He received a dream. Now, God is, God is still speaking. Are we still dreaming? Was our first message. Are we still listening? Where my servant, where I am, my servant also will be. Are we daily saying, Jesus, I'm following you. I want to be where you are. The Father will honour, Jesus says, the one who serves me. This is about being fruitful, isn't it? We will bear fruit. He will bless us as we seek to serve him. Jesus will for us do not all does not always match up with worldly success and status. We must be careful. We don't just fall into the rut given to us from the culture around us that puts career status symbols of all its various kinds. How do we define success? How do you define success? How do you define success for yourself? How do you define success for your children? How do you define success for a church? Surely it's in sacrificial service, following Jesus, that may mean being despised and rejected. But the promise is, if we will be sown, if we will be planted, we will bear much fruit, true fruit. 
So in response, to be fruitful, we must be planted. Joseph was despised. Jesus was despised. Are we prepared to be despised? I don't want to be despised. I, I want to be liked. I want to be loved. I want to be honoured. If I was to really push it, I guess I really want to be worshipped. And so do you. The flesh, that part of us which is still not perfect, and that's lots of us, isn't it? There's lots in us that's not perfect. We don't want to be despised. We need God's grace. We need to ask for the Holy Spirit's help to suffer for Jesus. John 12, 42 to 43 says this, yet at, yet at the same time, many, even among the leaders, believed in him, but because of the Pharisees, they would not openly acknowledge their faith, not openly acknowledge their faith, for fear they would be put out of the synagogue, for they loved human praise more than the praise of God. God help us that we would not love human praise more than the praise of God, that we would fear being despised by people more than we fear God and love God and want to please God. Are we prepared to be planted, to be despised? If we want to be fruitful, we must be prepared to be planted. Joseph was put into darkness. Jesus was put into darkness. Being planted is, is about also being rejected, put outside. Hebrews 10, 32 to 34 says, Remember those earlier days after you received the light when you endured in a great conflict. Full of suffering. Sometimes you were publicly exposed to insult and persecution. At other times you stood side by side with those who were so treated. You suffered along with those in prison and joyfully accepted the confiscation of your property. You knew that you yourselves had better and lasting possessions. Are we prepared? The confiscation of our property? What about the loss of a job? What about the loss of respect? What about hate online? Are we prepared to go into the cistern for Jesus? Do we live for another world? Do we live for the eyes of Jesus? Do we understand we have better possessions, eternal possessions and a, an eternal citizenship? Or are we living for this world? Are we prepared to be despised? Are we prepared for darkness? Are we prepared to be planted so we can bear fruit? Finally, Jesus, Joseph was taken to a destination. He was taken to Egypt. Are we prepared to go where we don't want to go? Or to stay where we don't want to stay? For the mission, for Jesus. Now, of course, you can go where you want to go. You can stay where you want to stay if you believe it's God's will. I'm not judging you. But search your own hearts. Why do we stay? Why do we go? Is it for the mission of Jesus? Or are we living for this world and living for ourselves, for our own comfort? Jesus says in Matthew 16, 24 to 25, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it. But whoever loses their life for me will find it. They will find life. If we follow Jesus, we have eternal life. But not only that, in this life we find fruitfulness. Even in the midst of suffering and difficulty, we will have the joy of seeing people saved. We will see the joy of seeing people transformed, of the work of God extending. Will you offer what you do as a job to Jesus? I'll do what you want me to do. 
Will you offer your location to Jesus? I'll stay or go where you want me to go. I offer my relationship to you, Jesus. I'm living for you. Will you refuse to chase your will and say your will be done? To be fruitful, we must be planted. That sometimes means being, being despised, darkness, going somewhere we don't want to go or staying where we don't want to stay. It means lots. It means ultimately living for Jesus. It means dying to ourselves and our own wants and our own will and saying your will be done. There is no fruitfulness outside of the way of the cross being prepared to suffer for Jesus, for his name's sake. There is no fruitfulness outside of this road. To be fruitful, for us to bear fruits like this, we are seeds. To be fruitful, we must be planted, prepared to take up the cross and follow Jesus. To be fruitful, we must be planted.